Hello welcome back. I'm Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be going over the patch notes for 1024. So as always, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out a ton on the channel. Be sure to come by, check out the stream as well. We stream every night starting around 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Usually go till about 3 or 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Very friendly, chill community. We'd love to have you. I try to talk as much as possible while I'm playing the game, sort of walking you through my decisions and, you know, reflecting on the decisions of other people in the game. And then also just holding a conversation about league or old man stories or anything else that y'all want to talk about um, in the chat. It's always a good time, so be sure to check all that out. And I do fresh tier lists, patch notes, and tons and tons of other content um, all the time. So be sure to check all that out. Okay, so 1024 is kind of a surprise here that usually they release the patch notes on Tuesday and the patch comes out Wednesday. But maybe because of Thanksgiving, they're doing it a day early. So I'm not entirely sure about that. But I think it's going to go live tomorrow on Tuesday rather than Wednesday. So um, it doesn't say here exactly what it is. So it's it's kind of breaking tradition here, and it's a little weird. But um, anyways, that's, that's what it is. Okay, let's walk through it here. And I'm also releasing a video. They, um, they talked about some of the things they want to do for 1025. Um, sorry, my hair is just kind of a have a wreck after all day on all day conferences with students um <clears throat> but on 1025 they're making supposedly a lot of changes and i just released a video i'll probably do it either today or tomorrow i recorded it today or yesterday rather um but anyway stay tuned for that i'll give you a preview and the new champion um rel is coming out as well and i'm going to do a whole separate video on her so stay tuned for that Okay, uh, Amumu, ridiculously OP champion right now. If we look, um, I don't know if I've seen a number this high. 184 pick ban is absolutely insane. The PBI, and I use Lolalytics. People have asked me over here, like, what is this website? The PBI is a formula based on a champion's win, per, win percentage and its pick, combined pick and ban rate. So they kind of explain the formula right there for you. But basically, the higher the number, the more OP the champion is. And 184 is just like completely off the charts. The only other champ that's even close to that is Jen at 147 right now. Um, but yeah, he's Amumu's mega OP. So what are they changing? They're changing his base damage over time from 5 to 4 early uh, on his W and from 15 to 12. This really isn't going to matter, I don't think, that much. It might hurt his early clear a little bit. Um... But a lot of it is percentage max health based damage. So it's still going to be 1% per level with one rank in W and then 2% when you max W. I think a lot of people max W second, like bandage, then W, and then E. I'm not really sure exactly, but either way, it's not going to matter. If it's a 2,000 health target, you know, your W, even if you just have one point in it, is going to be for 20. So you know, taking off three, right? Instead of doing 35 damage per second, you'd be doing 32. So that's like less than 10% nerf. And if you get it maxed out and it's 2% per, then you would be doing, instead of 55, you'd be doing 52 per second. So it's it's a slap on the wrist. It's really not going to matter. That's not what's making a, a Mumu OP right now. It's the items on him. And it's all the utility that he brings. Like he's just so good with so many um, different tanky type of items. Now, they are nerfing the ratio on this, um, on it to a 0.25 per 100 AP um, percentage point. So instead of, so that would be one, so these are in half a second, which is kind of a weird metric, but instead of basically 1% AP per second, it's going down to a half a percent per second. But he doesn't even build that much AP. The only thing that he builds is um, the Demonic Embrace. And I think that has 75 AP on it. So you're looking at maybe, and if he takes like some AP runes, which I'm not sure uh, which runes he's going to get. But if he takes some AP runes, then, you know, maybe this is going to be lowering it by, I, I don't know, you know, just a slap on the wrist amount of damage again. So it's really not going to matter because he's not building that much AP these days, right? He's going for the Sunfire. He doesn't do Leandries most of the time so it's just really not going to matter so they're just very slightly now i don't know how often this bug fix happened if he was consistently putting out more damage from that bug that might actually make a difference but it's not going to matter sunfire is still a good item they did nerf the damage on the item it did not affect his win rate very much i think he may have lost 
two percent, so went from sixty one to fifty nine. So maybe he goes down to fifty seven off of this. He's still going to be extremely strong. And the thing that makes him strong is, you know, he has much faster clear, much safer clear. He heals through the jungle. It's harder to invade him early on. It's much easier for him to take the scuttle because he just has to tap it with his bandage, and he does, like, half health to it by knocking off the shield. The Gromp heals him in his own jungle now. <clears throat> and there's just a lot of really powerful mages. Now, they are nerfing some mage items, but his ultimate and his passive combined to give that extra 10% true damage out to mages on your team is just super strong and he's very he's just very durable and very good with the sunfire item they really need to nerf those items again but either way he's still going to be very good 57 percent plus still uh best in class in the jungle at all elo brackets uh hecarim is getting some nerfs so his bonus movement speed uh ad conversion is going from 12 to 24 percent so he's losing in the mid game um I don't know a, a few percentage points there i don't think that's going to matter too much i don't know exact numbers on him but i don't think that's going to matter too much and then the devastating charge bonus movement speed um is going down by 10 percent at all ranks so i mean maybe he doesn't one shot people as much but a lot of it is he just has so many different items um, that can be very strong. So like with Trinity, he's got that sticking power, and Sterix is very good. And the big part of it, and this is for Amumu as well, they don't have to buy Cinder Hulk in the jungle anymore. So, And that item was terrible. Like You really didn't want to buy it. You just had to on some champs. Now you can get the Bombie's effect, but it's actually a good item on Amumu. And then with Hecarim, you can just skip it, and you have enough wave clear with the new you know, Hailblade early on to get through. So basically it's saving you 1500 gold towards a real item right so now he can get trinity force way faster than he could in the past without sacrificing too much and amumu you know can get much more powerful items as well so <clears throat> he's still going to be a very strong champion i think so may maybe off of that hecarim goes down maybe one percent maybe half a percent he's still going to be very strong uh none of his items are getting affected here i mean you could argue that maybe he's even going to be stronger because he's not a mage and all of the mages are getting nerfed um some of them much harder than others but most of them are getting nerfed one way or another so he might even be a little bit stronger against a lot of his competition kale is champions absurdly op right now um i don't know what her win rate is but she, i think it was like 57 or 58 percent because it's so much harder to punish her in the early game just they gave her some buffs recently yeah it's 57 percent um just absolutely absurd now she's one of the few people that can stand up to these tanks so if they nerf the hell out of her and people just don't play her anymore, I mean, virtually no one's going to be able to stop the tanks. Maybe Vayne, but the, the tanks are just going to be unkillable. So they're nerfing this attack speed. That doesn't matter at all, I don't think. I mean, how much ability power? You don't... Like, maybe two or 300 at some point in the game. So what, what are we talking about here? Like, 3% attack speed nerf when she has 300 AP and she's level 16? It's like, come on. Really? Um, but they are nerfing most of her big items. So they're nerfing Lich Bane and Rift Maker and Nasher's Tooth pretty significantly on her. So we'll see where she goes. I still think she'll be quite good. I still think she'll probably clock in at 55%, but maybe there's a prayer that you can hold her back and stop her. I still think she'll be basically unstoppable at 16 because she just overkills everybody. It's ridiculous. So anyways, I would have hit her directly a bit harder. But maybe they're thinking, you know, they're nerfing all of her ma major items. So maybe that's enough. I don't think it will be. But she'll go down a bit. But I still think she'll be good at 55%. Okay, Samira, um, way too strong right now. So they're lowering her melee damage. Okay, she doesn't... I mean, on, in some cases, I guess she dashes in and goes melee. Maybe against other AD carries. But that's, that's not going to matter. And then her dash range on her passive, like her third or fourth passive that she has, they're nerfing that, like when that's really gonna start coming into effect at level eight, it's like 100 range. It's like she can still, she gets a free dash still for like 800 or 875 range to gap close on someone who's been CC'd. And then she gets to still add on an extra half a second of CC. Like that's ridiculous. Why? Why are both of those a thing? Why does she get to add the CC? And why does she get a free dash on somebody who CC'd? I don't know. It's just one aspect of her kit among a lot of other things that are just over the top. 
I don't mind the wind wall thing that she has or some of her mobility and stuff, but just things like this are just extra. Like, why does she need to add extra CC and get that dash? So, anyways, I would have just removed this thing entirely, and I think she would still be good. So, I, I don't think that's going to matter. Okay, Trendamir, I'll be honest, I'm not sad that this champion's not in the meta. This is one of the most obnoxious champions in the game, in my opinion. Just mindless split push. Uh, just really difficult to deal with if you don't have the right kind of comp to deal with it. So, just a classic snowball, um, you know, super minion type of champion. Um, and then, so, he's getting a little bit of extra AD, okay. And then, bonus AD per 1% missing health. He's getting a little bit more there, 0.2. So, all right, I, I don't think it's going to matter that much. I think that he's just going to get massacred by tanks at most points in the game. And, the, I mean, the game's just going to be over before he gets to four items where he might actually be able to kill the Shen or the Orn or whatever, and they'll probably still kill him anyway. So, it just feels like he's really bad into the kind of tanks that are going on out there right now. Like, Thornmail just completely dumpsters him. Thornmail plus the Sunfire, like, good luck. Killing the Shen or, you know, whatever's up there, especially Shen cannot believe he didn't get touched on this patch but anyways uh it, it's not gonna matter they they need to buff crit before he's gonna be able to come back into the meta i think he's like a 43 percent win rate so maybe this gives him a little bit but he's still gonna be pretty bad okay so this is interesting i talked about in my 1025 preview video that i'm gonna release again that i was hoping that they would rework some of the 80 carries to give him a more unique identity and this is sort of what i actually was um you know hoping they would do with varus so it's interesting they're trying to go more towards the arrow like being a, like hitting people with the big legless arrow and i think that is the more interesting build rather than just like kogma 2.0 with an ult right i think the on hit build is just not particularly interesting um and so that i like that they're going with the legless style so the blighted arrow no longer reduces the cooldown by three seconds if it detonates um, any blight stacks. So that's knocking about 30% CDR off of this. Well, that was a flat reduction of 3%. So if somehow you got CDR in your build, it's 10 seconds flat on the arrow once you get it max level. And if somehow you got to like 30% CDR, like you could have a lot of arrows because it's a flat amount reduced. So if you had seven seconds on this and it would go down to four seconds so <clears throat> that was a really powerful interaction however um now if you charge it up to two seconds it does 50 percent more damage it's always had that but now the blight stacks do 50 percent more damage so the blight stacks um if you max that second um can get up to 15% extra damage. So now you could do up to 22% of their max health damage. And um, I can go ahead and just pull him up here. So there's going to be like three different ways you can kind of buff him up. Look at his health. 530. Like, what the hell? Why does Jen have 585? I don't know, man. He, he's just like, he needs some help with his base stats too. Like, that's, that's extremely low. Um... But, so you can charge it up, and then your maximum physical damage, so if you have it charged up for two seconds, is 235, and then 145% of your total AD, not bonus AD, total AD. So if you have, like, 150 total AD, then that'd be, like, 220 plus this amount, 235, so you're going to be hitting them for, you know, 400-something, probably. So that's already a lot, but now, and that's including the bonus, the 50% bonus, but now with this Blighted Quiver, you can do up to 15% um, of the target's maximum health. And that can go up to 22% of their maximum health. And then before you fire your arrow, you can activate the W, and that's going to do up to an additional, um, you know, in the mid-game, 18% of their missing health. So you can have like a 400 base damage arrow and do 22% of their max health and do 18% of their missing health. Now, I don't know. I think this all triggers at the same time. Um, 
but that I mean that's a lot of scaling on something like that so I think the combo is going to be you hit them with your ult and then you just fully charge an arrow and then just shoot them because the ult is going to give you three stacks of blight over one and a half seconds so if you just hit them and immediately charge your arrow instead of auto attacking and then fire your arrow at one and a half seconds it'll hit them by about two seconds and you, you'll get a, a lot of extra damage off of that so it's kind of weird that it wants you to auto attack to stack the blight and then it wants you to fully charge an arrow for two seconds in order to like grab them so <clears throat> i don't know maybe he takes phase rush or something with that like you auto attack three times and you phase rush and run back and kite them and then shoot them with an arrow it's a very bizarre play style so you lose a lot of your potential damage if you just charge your arrow up to max and just like chuck arrows from a distance they do want you to auto attack first and you can't just insta cast the q you have to charge it up so it's weird it's a it's a really weird play style but i mean if this allows you to pretty much one tap somebody like the ult is a really good setup um for that if they don't flash the arrow then they're pretty much going to die off of ult plus activate w plus fully charged arrow is going to do just an insane amount of damage especially if you take like dark harvest with this but so this would open up like a lethality build with him um oh i guess you could do um instead of phase rush you could just take the uh eclipse and then just trigger eclipse on somebody just auto auto trigger eclipse auto and then just run away you know for that extra couple of seconds um and then charge your arrow up on them so isn't that right sadie so i guess it's interesting in exchange for that though they are nerfing the hell out of your blighted quiver so the on hit is not a thing anymore because they're taking off 10 on hit damage so on hit varus attack speed varus is going to be really really bad now i guess you, it allows you to get your quiver faster and then you can q the ap is kind of tempting you get six percent of their target's health and you do get 50 percent more of that so if you take like nashers i still feel like it's bad i feel like lethality is just better it does help with your blight stacks it would help with your chain of corruption damage but this just scales so hard off of your total attack damage 145 percent i think you just have to go with ad but i mean maybe i'm wrong <clears throat> and then chain of corruption is a bit slower so detonating blight does lower the cooldown on all of your other non-ultimate abilities by 12 percent though so i think that would lower the cooldown on your w on this thing by 40 seconds which is interesting but yeah each per stack okay so when someone is stacked up and you arrow and you hit them with that then it's going to reduce your arrow cooldown by 36 percent which is roughly three seconds off of the 10 second base um but it would also reduce the cooldown on like your e if it's on cooldown and your um and your uh your w so i mean maybe you could weave the e in there like you could maybe like i don't know auto auto hail of blades it would trigger the blight and then auto 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 run back q and then it would pull up like your hail of arrows and almost be back up i don't know it's kind of an interesting interesting sort of play style if you can pull it off but i think it's going to be very difficult to play correctly so i don't think he's going to go up that much off of this i could be wrong like if the ult plus arrow interaction is like literally a one shot with eclipse like doing eclipse plus um the collector like a gen type of build maybe it will be one shot we'll see but interesting changes very challenging play style to figure out how to balance the auto attacks and the fully charged cues and things like that so anyways um Yasuo, they're nerfing his interaction with Gensus. Thank God. I mean, this champ was just completely taken over. I mean, what he had like a 60% win rate, right? Let me see. Oh, wait a minute. He has a 46% win rate. So why are they nerfing his only viable build right now? Like, what? I mean, I don't even play Yasuo, so I don't have a horse in the race. But really, why are you going to take that away from him? Like, that's the only positive win rate thing that he has. He has a 50% win rate if he goes for that item. If he doesn't go for that first, he, you know, Immortal Shield Bow is 47%. Like, is it really that threatening? I don't know. I thought that was kind of a cool interaction, potentially. 
So once again, I'm not like a huge Yasuo player, but like, I mean, he's hard to play. Like, I give props to people that can play him correctly. He's extremely risky. He's probably one of the most difficult champions in the game to play. Like, throw him a bone, you know? If he plays well, give him a chance to win. You know, I'd much rather Yasuo be, you know, pretty decent in a meta than like, you know, Maokai or a Mumu or something like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the tanks. I can respect it, but like, there's not much mechanical about those champs, right? Like, I think people should be rewarded for playing very difficult champions like Yasuo. They should at least have an opportunity to get to a 50% win rate. So, I don't know. I don't like that change. Um, and I don't know why they're talking about, like, it changes their play style. You have to learn this play style. It's the same freaking thing. You get in there close, and you just auto-attack people and use your cues. Like, you're not changing, I don't think, that much about your play style to do that it's just like that's the thing that gives you the best chance to do the most damage right now but anyways this is another one it's like blade of the rune king why are you nerfing this right like nobody gets this item right if you look at even like vein right if you're looking at the top adcs right now who are you afraid of right i mean like Jin and samira are clearly the best ones by a large margin misfortune's pretty good too they don't get Blade of the Rune King. If you look at Vayne, like, Vayne doesn't even get Blade of the Rune King half the time, right? Like, her best item is going to be, um, well, technically Shield Bow early on. Um, and then Blade is like, it's in there, it's in the mix, but it's not significantly better than anything else, and it's not the best, right? And then if you look at second item, Gensu's is better as a second item. Um, even at third item, like, Bloodthirster's better statistically at third item. So it's not like, it's not even better for item one, two, or three for Vayne. Like, there might be some other people. I looked up a couple more. The only thing I could see where it was a little bit better than some of the other items were on Irelia and Jax. And Jax is a 50% win rate champion right now, and Irelia is like 46%. So it's like none of the top end champions in this meta right now are getting that item. I know that, like, Katarina was getting it, but I think it was a lower win rate. It was like a troll, it was like a meme build. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's basically a meme build. Right? So, like, it's way lower than Rift, uh, or Night Harvester was. And then even on second item, it's way lower than any of the other AP options. So, it's just a meme build on Cat. So, I don't know why they're hitting this item compared to other legendaries it competes with like no i don't know i don't get it but what i, I mean i guess it's not going to affect anybody because nobody gets it so like the only people it's going to affect are champions that are not really that good right now even master yi doesn't get it um so yeah i guess it's going to hurt jackson irelia irelia you know is another champion that's pretty interesting and i wish she was a little bit better in the meta so it sucks they're knocking out that item from her but I guess it is what it is. Cosmic Drive. This is an interesting item. Now, um, I've been looking at this on Recon a little bit, and it's complicated because it has really, really good components. Like, Recon loves having ability haste. Everybody's building Recon wrong, by the way. If you look at this, like, Mandate's 2% higher than Shirelia's. So many people build Shirelia's. Shirelia's is a complete dumpster fire item right now. And low-key, Night Harvester was the best one. And I was getting Night Harvester a lot on this patch with Rakan. Um, but not a lot of people were getting Cosmic as like a second or third. I guess it's not even registering on here. But I've, I've bought it a couple of times. And it's like, as a completed item, it's not going to give your team as much as Staff of Flowing Water. But the build path on Staff of Flowing Water is absolutely atrocious. Um, because you have to get Forbidden Idol which you're paying 800 gold for 600 gold worth of stats, 620 gold worth of stats on Forbidden Idols. That feels terrible. You have Blasting Wand, which is not great. It's okay. Versus like Cosmic Drive, you get Kindle Gem for the health and the ability haste, and you get Fiendish Codex for the AP and ability haste, and it's got another Amp Tome built in. So it's got all these really nice little like 400 gold components, and then like these 800 gold advanced items. And then the completed item is okay. It's not insane. It's close to 100% efficient. And it gives you a lot of extra movement speed. So 
yeah, a staff of flowing water is probably correct most of the time, but I like that they're adding on. Like, this is an interesting item that not a lot of people get if you really want to amp up the um, ability haste. So giving it an extra 100 gold worth of value will bump it up, I think, to almost a perfect 100%. So I think it's good. I like the move. Um, Demonic Embrace. Now they're taking this down to 1.2. Okay, I thought they were taking it down to 1%. Every second for three seconds. I thought it was four seconds. Hold on. I got to see this. I know that Leandre's is over four. Now read this carefully. Demonic Embrace, Nasher's Tooth, and Lich Bane are dominating the second item slot. So three different items. So you're telling me there are diverse options in the AP tree, so we need to nerf all of them. Isn't that the goal? That it's supposed to be diverse? I mean, I guess maybe they mean that on different champions, each one of those items is starving out other choices. I mean, guys, you can just come out and say it. You don't have to talk about starving out other choices. Just say that they're too strong. Like, the win rate is too high. Um... On AP Mage because in a lot of cases it doesn't matter like the people that get some of these things could easily get other ones so like Zyra if she gets Demonic Embrace she could very easily you know just get Void Staff or some other things and have a very similar win rate it's just all the AP items are so strong right now okay let me see current um, Demonic Embrace so yeah it's over four seconds on live so this is like low-key yeah, okay, well, it says it right there, actually. So it's... So for poke, that's going to be a lot weaker for poke, then, because that would have been 6% total, and this is only going to be 3.6% total for pokes. This is far, far worse on, like, your Vel'Kazas or your Zeraths or something like that. Um, maybe on your Singed. So stuff that like does not consistently keep reapplying this, it's going to be far worse on that last hit. And I think it was already, honestly, a pretty overrated item on a lot of champions. So like this is not going to matter that much on a Moo Moo um, because he's going to stay in close with his tears and just keep reapplying this over and over again. And I guess if Singe can keep him like in the cloud or like, you know, Swain's going to stay attached and keep hitting him with stuff over and over again. With Brand, it might matter a little bit because um, you're going to lose like one last tick. So it's a, so on Poke, it's a nerf of over 25% damage going from 4 seconds to 3. But if you can keep reapplying it with certain items, it's not going to be that much of a nerf. It's only going to be a 20% um, because it's going from 6% down to 4.8. So I guess that's a 20% nerf. Um, no, but then it gets... So if it's if you're, if it keeps reapplying, then it's going to get checked. Then there's going to be 4 seconds of that 1.2. No, that's right. It's, it's a nerf. So I, I think... I don't know. There's probably alternative items that are pretty good, but this is kind of a nod to a Moo mostly, who would get this as second. And you get Sunfire plus his tears plus this, and that was just like way too much dot damage. So I think it's good. Dial it back. Stuff did have a high win rate, and I think most champions are going to have some alternative stuff they can get. And I think I still think it's going to be pretty good. So we're talking about like against a 3,000 health target, it's still going to do um, 36 magic damage a second instead of... 45 magic damage a second so i still think it'll be it'll be playable but um i think more people might start opting for some other options in there so that's good that's probably a good nerf eclipse um this item's just like super op especially on gen ironically enough like yes there are some melee champs that use it well but a lot of the biggest abusers are ranged it's like gin graves you know stuff like that and um they're choosing to say that it doesn't it's not going to proc that often. Now, the difference between 12 seconds and 16 seconds, I don't think is that big of a deal. It sort of is, but are fights really going to last longer than 8 seconds? A lot of them aren't, right? The fight's going to be determined in the first 8 seconds. 
So maybe in like these big tank versus tank type of fights, this is going to matter. So maybe, you know, on Jin, you would have been able to get off a second Eclipse proc at the eight second mark. Um, and now you won't get that. So it's going to create definitely some windows of weakness, but it's still going to be up once, like for every fight, even for skirmishes where you're chasing people down, it's going to be up. But it's going to be weaker at like the 8 second between 8 seconds to 16 seconds it's going to be weaker because you would have only gotten off um, 2 procs or um, yeah 2 procs instead of potentially 3 uh, let me see this item but I still think it's going to be really good I should just leave this up um, while I'm blanking out on it there we go. So they've nerfed this item a ton. It's hard to look at the efficiency. Like, anything with lethality is just troll because Sari to Dirk is absurdly OP. Because it, it says that, like, lethality is only five gold each to cancel out an armor. So it just... Sari to Dirk just throws off the pricing on lethality. So any sort of um, assassin item is... AD assassin item, the gold efficiency is just going to be out the door. Um, so it's got 55, 10% Omni Vamp is still really good, and 18 Lethality. And then it still does 6% max health and gives you 15% bonus movement speed and 100 plus 30% of your bonus AD on ranged. So that's like 160 shield. Yeah, it's and it gets 4% armor pin. I think it's still going to be really good. Because most of the time, the champions that want this, the fight's going to be over before 8 seconds anyway, so you would have only procced it once, and it wouldn't matter. So I still think it's going to be good. I mean, like maybe not like Aatrox or something. Maybe he goes Gore Drinker or something now instead of this if he's looking for... Um, you know, something for those longer fights versus tanks. So it'll, it'll change some champions... But I think champions like Jin will will still want this. A lot of the ranged champions will still want this because it's very unique. In the fact that it gives you the speed, just everything that it does, the speed, the shield, um, the and the fact that it has attack damage, life steal, or like omni vamp and lethality all on one item is just really good. The six percent targets max health is just kind of the cherry on top. It's not even the real reason that a lot of the champions build it. Okay, essence reaver. This item's really bad. I just I just don't know who's going to get this. Like, Lucian, maybe? It's like a Sheen proc um, crit item. So, the 10 extra AD, I mean, that does add an extra 300 value to this, right? Like, 350 gold value. So, it's going to make it um, over 100% by a little bit. And it's like, yeah, you do get the Spell Blade... You get the crit, you get the ability, hey, so... Yeah, maybe Lucian. Um, it doesn't have attack speed on it. So I was thinking, like, would any of the... the so, like, Ginsu users don't want it, probably. Ezreal, maybe? But Ezreal's probably getting Trinity Force. You can't get this and Trinity Force. So maybe if you get something else instead of Trinity on Ezreal... I don't know. It's reaching. Lucian, like I said, Lucian's about the only one I could really think of that would probably get this because he doesn't care as much about attack speed, but attack speed's still nice on him. So I don't know. It's a funky item. It's just kind of poorly designed, I think. But Kraken Slayer, 45% um, AD scaling. Now that looks really big. Um, but you have to keep in mind that a lot of people that are building Kraken Slayer are not going to get a lot of AD most of the time, right? Because they're going to be getting Ginsu second, which has no AD on it. Then they're almost certainly going to go Phantom Dancer third because it's getting a huge nerf on this or a huge buff on this patch. So that's like three items with no other attack damage on it. So probably not going to matter. It's like a placebo buff there. The extra five AD is very nice though. And this item, like, it's already not bad. Now this says, fixes a bug. Gensu's Rageblade now properly triggers at all ranges when the holder also has Kraken Slayer. 
So if that means that Gensu's will actually double proc Kraken now, that is extremely strong if it works that way. Right now, it'll give you two stacks of Kraken. So you'll trigger it every third or every second attack instead of third attack, you'll trigger it. But it does not double the true damage off of that. Which is weird because I feel like I don't know if it doubles for Vayne's Silver Bolts either, or if it just allows her to stack it twice, but I don't think it doubles the, the damage there. But <clears throat> either way, it's it's not a terrible item. It's just not not it's just like a really greedy build. But it's very, very good on things like Vayne. Um if you can get away without getting Shield Bow. Although Shield Bow is super strong, especially once you get Gensus to go with it. Because you gotta remember on hit damage does apply lifesteal now. Leandre's Anguish. Now this one looks bad, but you have to look at it very carefully. And this one is actually not really a big deal. So I think this will be the default item that a lot of mages are going to get. A lot of mages are already getting this. Um, but this is actually going to be still be very strong. Because it has three different damage components to it. And they're nerfing the one that contributes the least in a lot of cases. At least in the early to mid game. So... If you look at it here, it's 60 damage, flat, which is a lot, over 4 seconds, 4% 4 of the target's maximum health, and then you get 10% of your AP is just flat damage added onto that, currently, right? So if you have 200 AP in the mid game, you have this, one other item, and like your runes, and maybe an amp tome or something, um, then you would be getting 20 extra damage on that. So if you're hitting a 2,000 health target in the mid game, you know, that's going to be uh, 80, 80 damage from the max health plus 60 is 140, right? And then you'd be getting 20. If you have 200 ability power, you'd be getting 20 off of that. So it would take you up to 160 total damage, right? But now they're taking the, uh, the damage ratio from 2.5% of AP to 1.5% of AP. So what does that translate into over four seconds? Um, 4%, so it'd be 6% of your total AP instead of 10% of your total AP. So what's the difference in that? Um, eight, eight damage. So now instead of doing um, 160 damage, now you're only doing um, 152 damage. Uh, is that even right? So eight, eight, Six, no, I think it's four damage, not eight. Um, no, that's right. It's eight damage. So instead of doing 160, you would do 152. It's like, it's not even 10%. I don't even think it's 5%. I don't know the exact, let me pull up my trusty calculator here. Later. No, remind me later. Okay. Um, so 152 divided by 160, it is 5%. So it's 5% on the dot. So this is getting nerfed by like 5% damage, right? But a lot of the other AP items are getting nerfed way hard. That Demonic Embrace is a much bigger deal on poke because it's not only losing like the 20% there, but it's only burning for three seconds instead of four. So if it's not reapplied, that's a huge nerf to the damage. Leandre's only 5%. Witchbane going down to 0.4. I still think Witchbane is going to be really good. What people don't realize about why this item's really OP is they forget what this item initially was. And it used to only give you 75% of your base AD um, and then 50% of your total AP. Um, so that means that if you're playing a champion that just has like 80 base AD, just like any normal champion in the mid game is going to have like 80 base AD that means that, you know, before then, you were only dealing, like, I don't know, 60 damage, right, off of that. But with the new version, you're dealing 120. So you're just off of your base AD alone. Forget the AP ratio. That's all it's doing. Um, <clears throat> so that's an extra, what, 60 damage that you were doing. So if they knock this off, if they reduce this by 10... Right, and take it down to 0.4. If you have 200 AP, um, you know, in the mid game again, then, you know, your two item power spike with runes, then you're only going to be losing 20 damage. So it's like, okay, they're taking away 20 damage, but they're still giving you 60 because of the 150% um, AD ratio. So 
it's still extremely good and you're still netting 40 damage over top of that um, so it's still very strong um, and you have the extra movement speed and it costs 200 less gold so it's 200 less gold you have uh, three percent more movement speed than it was last season in season 10 and you're still doing an extra 40 damage every time you proc this now you can only proc it every 2.5 seconds instead of 1.5 but the majority of champions that want this aren't going to have cooldowns that are below 2.5 seconds it's not like cassiopeia is not building this rise is not building this right it's going to be like your fizzes your echoes that type of stuff so still going to be super strong so yeah they're they're tapping it a little bit but i don't i don't think it's going to matter that much now this in conjunction with some of the other ap nerfs maybe but the mages need to be nerfed like they're they're all op right like fizz all these other champs they're, they're really op so anyways i guess that's a fair way to do it i would just like why does it need to have like so much base power off of like ad why does it scale so much with ad with no items that's what they need to nerf they need to take it down to 100 percent of your total ad and give it a better ap ratio so that it scales a little better but then it's not like completely ridiculous if you get it like in the early to mid game but anyways this is what they're doing it's fine it needs to be nerfed uh Luden's Tempest. So the movement speed is significant uh, off of this item. So they're like cutting that in half. So on champions that really want to kite with this item, so like Victor, um, maybe Cassio and, and stuff like that, this is going to be a nerf. The ratio doesn't matter that much because right now, I don't think it does anyways. Right now it's 100 base. So again, if you have 200 AP, instead of doing... Um, 130 damage off of a proc you're gonna do 120 so it's nerfing 15 damage on that so that does matter like that's like what around 12 percent damage or something nerf on it so that is significant when you're taking into account that the the movement speed is also um is also there then it's a pretty good little nerf but you're picking one of these right like you're not picking like you have to pick this or rift maker or any of these other like or leandries so that's not as big of a deal. The the nerf to things like Lichbane and Nashers, that's a bigger deal because those are second items, and so then you're getting two items nerfed. You're getting whatever your Mythic is nerfed, and you're getting either your Lichbane or your Nashers nerfed. So, or your um, your mask. So, anyways, Moonstone Renewer. So this is one of the more interesting ones, especially if you're a support fan on the channel, which I know most people are because I'm a support main on the channel, but. Um, Okay, so they're fixed. Okay, so they bug fixed where Moonstone was not healing, and if an ally was in combat, but the owner was not. So if your your buddy gets hit by poke. Okay, so now it's saying I believe if your buddy is poked by like a Velkaz hit or something like that. Even if you are not actively in combat, it will now heal them. So it heals poke on other people, I believe. I don't think it heals you personally. I've never bought this item, honestly, because it was just trash from the outset, I think. Um, but now they they are big time buffing it. So that should be really good if it actually does heal your allies through poke, even if you aren't personally in combat. That's solid. But now they're amping up the healing a lot, like 100% in the early game. So it starts at 60 instead of 30. That right there is massive to help you out against burst. Um, and now it's going up to 90. So it's 50% extra at the max level. So it's going to be averaging now in the mid game somewhere close to 75 instead of averaging 40. So it's still almost 100% extra heal. But it's capping out the heal now 25% per second for a maximum of 100%. So now it's fully ramped at four seconds and you're gonna get a total of an average of like 150 in the mid game versus an average of, um, what if it was 40 versus an average of 100. So you're looking at 50% more healing on this item. And once you start stacking in, you know, all of the plus healing and shielding, if they have spirit visage, um, if you have Revitalize, like there's a lot of modifiers that can go into this, but there are no AP ratios on it. So I'm not sure if everybody's going to get this, but champions that can't really get Mandate are definitely going to love this. So like your, um, 
your Sonas, maybe your Lulu, Sorakas, um, Yumi. Those chives of chance are really going to like this. So we'll see. I mean, this uh, this would open up a build for lots of plus healing and shielding. So you could go Moonstone Renewer into um, Staff of Flowing Water, into something like Redemption. And that could potentially be a really big build. A lot of times you can't really build more than maximum three items uh, just because of how much it costs. I really wish they would have reduced the cost on the Mythics for supports down to like 2,500 or at least 2,600, even if they had to like, um, you know, just tap their stats a little bit. It's because right now it just feels a little too expensive, but this is good. This is a good step in the right direction for, um, for some of those longer fights, especially into tanks and things like that, where some of these fights could go on for 10 seconds. When you have like you know a Mumu versus Shin or something in a fight, um, this could actually be pretty strong, especially if you get a lot of plus healing shielding. Now Nashor's tooth. So on some champions this is going to matter, and on others it, on most champs it will matter. On Azir for Jason, I don't think this is going to matter that much because um, only when he is personally auto attacking them with Azir does it lower the AP ratio. But as far as like the soldiers go, they don't trigger on hit anyway. So, I mean, if you have 200 AP, once again, you're going to be losing 10 damage per hit off of this. So instead of doing 50 damage per hit, you'd be doing an extra 40 damage per hit. So I still think it'll be okay overall. You're still getting like a really good bargain on like 100 AP. Plus, 50% um, attack speed is still nuts in terms of like a value proposition. It's still over 100% efficient. Even if it didn't have any on hit, it would probably still be pretty good. So yeah, it's still going to be like a 4,000 gold item on a lot of people that you're paying 3,000 gold for. So still a super, super strong item on the people that want it. But yeah, a little bit of a tap, especially to Kale, who's been OP on this patch. So they've hit Kale's, um, Kale directly. They hit Nasher's Tooth, which is common on her. They hit Lich Bane, which is common on her. And they're going to hit her Keystone here in a second. It's going to be common. Night Harvester. So this is the one that's getting hit the hardest. And I was kind of hoping this would not get hit because Jason and I have been abusing this all preseason. It's super, super strong on basically everybody. But none of the all-caps videos were talking about this hardly. Um, but statistically, this was the strongest on almost everyone. So... It's going from 175 in the early game all the way down to 125. That's 50 damage. That's a massive, massive hit. And then it goes all the way up to 200 instead of 250. So um, even at max rank, it's still a 20% nerf to the damage. And it's more than that earlier. So, I mean, this is this is very, very big nerf. Like, massive nerf. This is like, I don't know, 20 to 25% on average nerf to the damage output on this item. So... When you compare that to Leandri's, which is only losing 5% of its damage, or um, Luden's, which was only losing, what, like 12 or 13% of its damage, this is a very, very big nerf. I don't think you're going to see this item. I mean, unless it's a champ that really, like, has to get this item, I think you'll see other options. Um, this And this already had a problem against tanks. Like, it was pretty good in most matchups, but against tanks, Leandri's was going to be way better anyway. So this is just going to reinforce you're probably getting Leandris on um, a lot of mages now. And then Hextech. Um, so this is going from 200 damage to 175. So this is a pretty big nerf. Early on, it's not as big as the Night Harvester, right? So you're losing 25 instead of 50. Late game, you're still losing the 50, like Night Harvester is. I really wish they would have made this at least like 150 to 200. but um, So that's a pretty big nerf. But you still get the movement speed going forward. They were going to nerf that, but it looks like they pulled that back. So um, it's still going to be very good on things like Galio or other things that really want to gap close after um, they Hextech. So people will still get it. It'll still be okay. Phantom Dancer. This is an insane buff on Phantom Dancer, I think. 200 gold off of this. For someone like Vayne, who's already like pretty good, um, if they ever nerf Jen or Samira, Vayne's just going to be like off to the races. But yeah, getting something like Ginsu's into Phantom Dancer is becoming increasingly common and just skipping the Mythic on champions like Vayne is very, very good. This item is super efficient. Once you're able to get that fully stacked up, um, it gives you like 14% movement speed and like 80% attack speed. So this is going to be very, very good. It's going to really allow her to get under that curve because Ginsu's, I believe, is 2,800 still. 
Um, did they? I don't remember. Did they nerf Gensu's or change it up here? I'm already like zoning out because they might be doing that on 1025 or maybe they already did it. I can't. Remember. I know they tapped Gensu's a patch ago. I think or what hot fix it or something. But anyways, I think this is going to be um, really really good on a lot of those like your vein especially, but like your Cogmaws and stuff like that. Just going to go straight Gensu's into Phantom Dancer and just skip the mythic and then get Kraken like third or something probably. Okay. Prowler's Claw, 5 extra AD. This item really has a very low win rate. Um, I was shocked because I was thinking this was going to be the item no one was talking about that'd be very good on things like Zed or Rengar. But a lot of people just don't use that gap closer properly. The 15% damage amp is good, but AD Assassins are just frankly really bad right now, except for like Kha'Zix, which is sort of a special case. But they're really bad, and that's what everyone was crying about, which is so funny that that's what everyone thought was going to be super OP. They're like, oh my god, Dustblade's ridiculous, you know, and all this crap. But if you look, like, they're just bad. Like, Zed has 51%. He's the highest performing one um, in the mid lane, right? If we keep scrolling down, like, where's Talon? Talon's at 49%, right? Like, where are all of these, like, really broken Duskblade champions, right? It's like, okay, Kha'Zix, I'll give you that. Kha'Zix is good, but he's not even you know, the best in the jungle. I don't think. I mean, he's got a 53% win rate. It's like, okay, that's all right. But then you look and you're like, okay, Amumu's got a, you know, a 59% win rate. Nunu's got 56. Hecarim's 54. So he's not even really standing out that much, right? Ramus is 54. So it's like, Kha'Zix is okay, but the rest of them are just really bad. So they're trying to buff up the claw a little bit. Um... But we'll see. I mean, the tanks are real. Like, tanks will get you. Yes, Kane, but it's Red Kane that is the one that's doing very well, who's basically a glorified tank. Um, and then Riftmaker. So this is actually a really big nerf. This one might even be bigger than the um, Night Harvester because now it's only 10% extra damage instead of 15%, which is a 33% chance, or 33% damage reduction. So... That's really bad, and this is bad on burst champions. It's something you have to set up. So this is going to be a, a pretty significant hit to Kale. It's going to be a significant hit to Akali, um, and there are several other champs. So Akali's going to fall down. She's already really hard to play. Akali's probably going to lose like four percent off of these chance off of these things. Kale was so ridiculous to begin with. She might be able to make it through that. She's going to be like getting hit by this and Nashers and Lich Bane. So. We'll see. I still think Kale, just because of how she matches up into tanks, will still be good. Um, but Akali's going to struggle. And I don't remember who else was using it. Like, Singed was using this. I'm not that upset if Singed falls out of the meta. Um, I mean, he's fun to play, but he is really annoying. <clears throat> so, anyways. Um, big hit. I think that's a bit much. I really wish they would have made it, like, 2.5 per second. Like, take it down to 12.5 or something, but... Either way, sure. Serpent's Fang, no one's going to get this. This is like the the troll, like, hey, let's screw over Janna. I mean, I guess it, it can be good against, like, Set or Sterex or something, but those are just, like, short-term shields. I don't know. It's just, it's a poorly designed, like, hate item just to throw a token out there and say, hey, look, we've got healing reduction, so let's have some kind of shielding reduction. Whatever. I, no one's going to get this item. Okay, um, Tear of the Goddess. Now, this one's kind of interesting because it's it's less to stack now. It's only So you're probably going to stack it 20% faster. So instead of like 25 minutes, people will have to stack at 20. At like kind of, you know, your gold and platinum range elo. And then like really elite players might be able to stack it between 15 and 20. So that is pretty good. Um, Man immune, once you do get it stacked up, it is very strong. Like the on hit is still really nice. It does have some CDR on it, which is good. So Man Immune's still good. I think Seraph's Embrace is still Dumpster Fire because it doesn't have the shield on it anymore. So I don't think Seraph's is going to be good um, in a lot of situations. But Muramana is very good, especially if you get this on like a Gensu user. So someone like Kaisa might still like this at a certain point. Obviously, Ezreal is going to like it. Um, so Muramana might still be decent the problem is like you have to get this instead of a mythic early which is still going to be bad so i still think the tier users are not going to be amazing but they will at least like 
be able to play the game maybe with these changes so you know it's it's rough out there kaisa is at 50 percent, so she's kind of holding in there and i have seen some good kaisas but like ezreal's just really having a bad time um as are a lot of other tier user champions so we'll see it's it's a nice gesture just to let people stack it up faster and to give you more mana right out the gate so you can be a little more aggressive with your mana usage in lane the mid lane minion changes they already changed this and they just forgot to tell you about it so basically you get punished for roaming a lot more so the big one is the mid lane cannons get 30 percent extra attack speed against towers so they really will start cracking your towers so this is going to hurt the assassins you know the people that roam a lot um, so your Zeds and your Talons and stuff like that are really going to pay the price um, if they leave lane. So behavioral systems update. So now if someone's AFK before 10 minutes, then you can surrender at 10 minutes. And if someone is, if someone leaves during a ranked match or is detected as AFK, so I don't know how long they have to have left. Does this mean if they leave like right before the Nexus blows up that that might happen it's probably going to be they have to have left within five minutes then you get a reduced lp loss so i don't know how much reduction there is probably not a lot they don't say it's like three percent or something or three points maybe however if your pre-made leaves or if you're a provisional player or if you're in a promo then it's not gonna it's not gonna affect that you're still gonna get the loss and things like that so I think this is nice. It's just a little bit of a feels good if you get screwed over by an AFK on your team. I don't think it's going to get abused that much because you can't do it with a duo. Yes, there could be a win trading type of scenario or something like Hilo that maybe abuses this. But if you're only like not losing three or something, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's not going to inflate um, the MMR that much, I don't think, especially because it's upside down for a lot of people right now where they're losing more LP than they're gaining. So... I think it's fine. And it's just a little bit of a, a feels good, right? It's like, it's not going to feel good ever if someone, you know, goes AFK and you lose the game. But now you might be able to say, you know, if it just has that little bit of, uh, like, just, if they just put a message up that says LP forgiven or something like that, plus three, um, then that would just be a nice feeling. You know, it'd just be the system just saying, hey, we recognize that was a, a crappy experience for you. Um you know, thanks for being a good sport and playing the game out and not AFKing, we're going to let you keep three LP. So instead of getting minus 20, you're only getting minus 17. So it still feels bad, but it's just kind of a nod to you just saying, look, we feel your pain. We're going to help you out here. That guy's a, a douchebag. And hopefully they end up, you know, banning people like that faster, which they said they're going to. But I like this. It's a good, it's a feels good. It's a placebo. It's not going to help people climb significantly. It's not going to inflate, you know, over the long run. I don't think, depending on how much they're forgiving. They're not forgiving the whole loss. It says a little bit. Um, so we'll see. And it says might be reduced, so maybe they have something in place to detect if this is happening to you a lot, right? If every time you're going to lose, someone just magically goes AFK or something and you don't lose as much, they might detect that something is a foul there. I don't know what that would be, but maybe DDoSing, is that still a thing or you know when trading that type of stuff and improving the item shop i don't really care people are tripping out oh these icons they look bad i can't tell what this item is because i can't read the, the title of the item or you know I, I don't know it's just like i mean i get it to some extent people don't like the artistic style of it but honestly i mean i don't know i, I people do care i don't want to you know belittle it too much but i mean i don't know i like the item i think it's good Overall, I think that there are some things that obviously I'm not a huge fan of. I wish that, um, you know, the Mythics were a bit cheaper and stuff like that. But overall, I think they're doing a good job, you know, especially with how many different changes there are. Yes, there's some broken stuff. Yes, Amumu's broken. But, you know, considering how many different things are going on in the game right now, I think they're doing an okay job. And I've really had a fun time with the preseason. But anyways, and there's some bug fixes here. I'm not going to read through all of those, but there might be some that are... Gensu's Rage Blade no longer deals damage to turrets. Okay, well, that's kind of a big deal. Um, so some of these might be good, but I don't think a lot of them are going to be really meta-defining. So anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much. Be sure to check out my tier list. I'm going to release over the next few days. It'll keep you up to date on the meta and sort of how I think these changes are going to shift it. Come by, check out the stream. Starts around 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day. 
and I'll see you next time. Have a good day.